Welcome back, Stingers. I have a special guest for you today. I have Adama Cisse, who is founder and creator of Lil Astrology, based here in New York City. She's a professional astrologer, and she is going to talk to you guys today about the sun, moon, and rising and break it down. So I know a lot of you guys have had difficulty differentiating what the sun governs, what the moon does, and how important your rising sign is. So we're going to cover all of that today so you don't have any questions. You're not sitting there in the comment section <laughs> acting like you're crazy yes. ourselves. <laughs> and I'm a Scorpio too. Of course, Scorpio. So. Uh, say hello to the secret fans before we start. Hi, hi, secret fans. <laughs> how are you? All right, let's start this video. <laughs> a lot of people are... Um, confused when it comes to sun, moon, and rising. Like, they're confused in the sense that they don't know what the sun governs, what the moon governs, as far as our personality. Mm -hmm. And I try to explain to people um, when looking at a chart that obviously it goes deeper because you have all these signs and all these houses and thing, conjunctions and trines and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. However, to give them just a brief, I tell them to look at your personal planets, mm -hmm. um, your Sun, Moon, Mercury, Mars, and Venus, just to get an idea mm -hmm. of somebody's, the basics of the personality. Of course, there's other things that are involved. So can you go through what the Sun really represents in someone's chart and how important that is to their personality? Absolutely. So the sun is extremely important in your birth chart. The sun represents the ego and it also represents your path in this life and who you are trying to become. So it's actually pretty interesting that people like, oh, what's your sign? People first start off with their sun sign, but actually the moon is a little bit more of your internal soul. So that's why some people don't feel like a Virgo, or some people don't feel like a Cancer because their moon may be something just completely different. But as far as um, the sun, what you said, so, it yeah. being your life path, now mm -hmm. people confuse that with like their true note, thinking like, oh, that's mm -hmm. the path they're going on. So how does the sun represent like your mm -hmm. path? Well, nodes are more your karmic path. Um, I won't get into that because no, it's a separate, <laughs> separate discussion. We're not. I could totally, but I won't. Um, but the sun meaning in terms of your path, but it's who you are trying to become or who you, when you mature and you become of age, that is your vibration when you get to that place. Um, and the moon is your comfort zone. And um, that's also how you were nurtured as a child. So it's, it's basically like an inner child, whereas the sun is a grown up and who you are trying to become in this lifetime. Um, and it also represents the father energy. So this is the divine masculine, or one of the divine masculine archetypes um, in astrology. Well, a lot of people think that the sun is like not important, and in just in science in general, everything revolves around the sun. All the planets revolve mm -hmm. around the sun. Yeah, heliocentric, which is, which is the reality of the situation. Right. But for our purposes, we use geocentric, okay. which means to from, from from our experience in Earth, everything revolves around. Right, which is why which wheels, is how we read, yeah, the wheel, and yeah, yeah. Um, but the sun, I mean, yes. So the sun, that's at the center of the universe. So that is the core of your being. Um, and so as you go about your life and you go through certain experiences, a lot of them are pushing you on the path of the sun. So, for example, I have a Leo moon that squares my um, Scorpio sun. So the way that I am inside and my feelings and my instincts and my emotions. I have a difficult time harnessing that intense Scorpio um, energy and really channeling that in a creative way. I have it in the fifth house. So sometimes I can fall back on, you know, the Leo energy, need to be center of attention, all that. Right. And and it's like I, it's like the square is like the difficulty right. to harness who I really am. Now, just yeah. for the sake of people in the comments section, which I'll handle. <laughs> Can you please tell us your credentials? Because you're a real yes, astrologer in, here in New York City. Thank yes. you very much. And so uh, you've studied yes. at? Um, so I studied with Mira Epstein at NCGR. It's the National um, Council for Geocosm Geocosmic Research. Excuse me. Um, and we have a chapter in New York City, but it's an international organization with chapters in China and Turkey, um, Canada. 
Um, and, you know, there's a lot of astrologers that belong to this organization. I get emails and, from them every day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and essentially they want to elevate the education um, of a, the profession of astrology. Yeah. Um, so they have conferences. Um, I just went to the one in September we have in Baltimore um, where, you know, over 100 astrologers get together and literally just vibe out and talk about astrology. It's a very, very respected setting. organization, very respected yeah. organization where you go to learn yeah. real, study real astrology. Yeah. So now that we know that the sun is, everything revolves around the sun and mm -hmm. it's very important, mm -hmm. um, we can go on to the moon. Now, what is what is the moon about? Because I've heard people say... The moon is your mind, your thinking, how you analyze, and things of that nature. Or a lot of people are confused as to, um, they say that they feel more like their moon. Now, I have the luxury of having my sun and moon in Scorpio, so I have no, I have no struggle with uh, my ego and my wants and needs and things right, like that. Right, they match. Oh, yeah, totally. And it, you know. Yeah, so what is, what, is, what is the moon about? Like, how can people yeah. understand that better? So, um, going from the divine masculine archetype of the sun, the moon is the divine feminine archetype. So, the moon represents the mother maternal energy, but not only that, that's how you feel nurtured. So, a lot of the moon's energy can come from how your mother was. So, if you have a cancer moon, doesn't necessarily mean your mother was a cancer, but the type of um, nurturing that you received was very motherly and, like, that's what you need in your life in return. So that's why, you know, if you're an Aries sun, but you have a Cancer moon, to the outside world, you may be, you know, this fierce Aries warrior, but when you are home with loved ones and people that you know, you're ushy-gushy and you need, you know, extra love, extra tension, extra nurturing as a Cancer moon. So that is um, your private world. That's an internal, um, that's how you think. Mercury, obviously, is communication and thought processes, but the moon is like your instinctual thoughts. So it's like if you're walking walking across the street and you're about to get run over by a car, that's your moon. Mercury isn't rationalizing any right, of I, that. I see that more as like a moon. instinctual like feeling yeah. to, to move. Right. I don't think of... It's not like you're thinking about, should I move? This car's going to kill me. You're like, boop. Right. So would you yeah. say, just to clarify that, would you say it's more of your instinct but not something you, you're... See, people... Correct. I want to yeah. make it clear because people, when they say thinking... The moon is your, you know, how you think. Um, instinctually, your feelings, which the moon governs instinctually. If I'm about to hit, be, get, be hit by a car, I'm probably not thinking at all. No, nope. you actually freeze. That's the an animal you, brain that takes over. You don't think. Right. Period. You Correct. just stop, see bus, and you get ass get hit. Yeah. But uh, as far as a feeling that goes through. Mm -hmm. That's a whole nother thing. So I don't, I don't want people to be confused. So your moon governs instinctual. Are you saying it governs right. your instincts? Instinctual. I don't want to say it, reptilian or animal brain, but I, I mean it. Kind, it is. It's like you know. I'll just talk about myself with, and I'm a Leo moon. <laughs> there we go. Um, just with a Leo moon, it's like um, drama is an instinctual nature. So like if I was walking around the street and a car would hit me, I'd be like. Oh my god! Like, and I wouldn't even think to act like that. Whereas a Virgo would probably be like, "How the hell can I get out of this situation?" And like, think logically, because they just have that more of a logical, instinctual nature versus somebody with a Leo moon or a Scorpio may be more strategic and a little bit more like level-headed in their response. Um, so I would say, yeah, it's more of a fight or flight instinctual nature. It's also there's a difference between um, intellectual intellect and communication like with mercury versus I, I guess i'll say junk thoughts or it's like when you're walking down the street and you're thinking about like oh i have bills i need to pay or oh um you know i gotta do laundry when i get home or, or i'm thinking about something that happened 10 years ago going over the past that's all um instinctual thought that you aren't bringing up you're not actively rationalizing them and um being logical as opposed them. to what as opposed to sitting in a class and um, having an intellectual discussion about okay. a topic. Okay. It's more like thoughts that are all, and even subconscious thoughts are also moon. So thought, like we only have access to what, like it's like 5% of our brain. So that the rest of that, that's, that's, that's the moon. So it, it's not only 
rational, like the thoughts that you just think on a daily basis without even really trying. It's also the junk, like the subconscious. So that's why I like the ether. If there's people I yeah. really don't like, I always think about murdering them. So that's in the <laughs> yeah. I mean, I yeah, yeah, yeah. So or it just moon. comes up, like yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. That's, so that that's that's moon, and and it's also with relationship compatibility. I always you know, think the moon everybody. is yeah. The moon is so important, and cross synergy of the moon is really important as well. So if you are a Scorpio moon, being with somebody who's a Scorpio sun, that cross synergy still also creates a comfort level because how you are on the inside, let's pretend you don't have a Scorpio sun, but how you are on the inside, they are, that's who they are now. That's who they're, they're, they are, essentially the moon is reflecting the sun. So how you feel on the inside, that person is just walking and doing that and you just agree and you can follow and say like, Hey, I, Oh yeah, I want to go eat that. Or, oh yeah, I want to go do that. And the person will make decisions and you kind of just follow along. No, um, so just, it's more of the receptive, Feminine energy versus the sun that's, you know, masculine and putting that energy out there. Would you say that your moon sign would depict um, how you choose your relationships, like your comfort level? Because I need intense experiences. And if they're not, yeah. I will get rid of you very yep. fast. I'm the not moon, interested whatsoever. Venus is what we, I like to say Venus is what we like. So that's like... The dating, like, you know, short-term stuff, but moon is what we need. Moon is marriage. So when okay. you have, like... The quality. The quality, like, the real long-term quality. Right. Um, and they and also with, you know, men, I'll refer to just straight men, but with straight men, the moon energy can represent the wife or with the qual- type of qualities that he's looking for right. in a wife. So a man with a Scorpio moon, if you meet Scorpio woman, that's, like... It's like, oh, you're the embodiment of literally. And it helps to be a Scorpio Venus on top of it. So okay. it's like, oh, I want to date you. But then I also like want to settle down and have a family. And right. Because it, I mean, it's creepy, but it's like resembles the nurturing that they receive from their mother. Okay. So, you know, they say when men marry their mothers and when they yeah. marry their fathers. Yeah. Essentially. Well, is, yeah. Eh, it's like, it's all, it's all like a lot of subconscious, subconscious stuff. Yeah. I'm attracted to people like my father though. Yeah. Was, was he Scorpio? No. He actually, he was, funny, um, he was a Sag with a Capricorn moon, but I don't attract either of those. I will not touch a Sag and I ain't yeah, yeah, a Capricorn. Yeah, no, I would never recommend a What was your Venus and Virgo, right? Yeah. Yeah, I would but, recommend a Sag for you. But his qualities are mm-hmm. um, powerful. Mm-hmm. Tall, in ch- always in charge, mm-hmm. always in charge. You never felt unsafe with him. Like anybody, if you were with him, people just scattered like roaches. And I like that in not just men though. I like that in female friends too. I like people who can handle themselves, so that I don't have to. I so love I don't that have too. to step into a man's role mm-hmm. because you need a pacifier mm-hmm. like that. So it's I Scorpio toughness. It's 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 because. We've gone through so many traumatic experiences, every, every Scorpio. And honestly, even our generation, Pluto and Scorpio, I'm going to assume that you're Pluto. I'm 44. Oh, I don't know. Well, girl, no, you're not. But, Pluto but, but my, <laughs> the, my, you don't look it. You look amazing. <laughs> so I don't even get that. Um, but my generation, Pluto and yeah. Scorpio, we've gone through yeah. trauma and pain. So yeah. when you go through it and you regenerate so many times, you don't have patience for people who act like babies. Yeah. It's like, yeah. take care of what you... Take care of what you need. People don't understand that because they love how we protect them. They even brag about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and it's exhausting. So yeah. They don't understand how we're looking at you. I'm like, ooh. It's like, but it, the thing is, it's like you, you kind of want to, but then you yeah. get, re- you get resentful. Of course. But I feel like as I've gotten older, I'm like, I'm not gonna do it because then no. I get resentful. So oh, it's yeah, better to just <laughs> not cut it off. Yeah, not, yeah, not handle that, but. But yeah, so that's moon is subconscious thought, what you're comfortable with. It's also how you act around friends and family too. Well, that comfort level. Yeah, that comfort level. That comfort that com- yep. when you're when you're home, which brings me into the next conversation about rising because these people love to talk yeah, about their rising. Oh my gosh, it's, yeah. the, it's their favorite thing. Like my rising Scorpio. My, no, they like to talk about when they're rising Scorpio, mm-hmm. and they like to say how they're they're Scorpio. <laughs> they love it. They love it. But I mean, you know, so how important is the rising and tell us what 
purpose that has like how does that handle mm -hmm. you know someone's uh who they are and how who they present themselves to be so this is another um subconscious energy yeah um so essentially in in a uh, astrology is the rising sign is um the sign that was at the rational horizon in the east when you were born so the rational horizon is not the one that you can see but it's the one that's literally out in space it's that's the the horizon we call it rational horizon and that is where um your rising sign is um it's a little bit of past life energy as well um, many of us believe that it is the sign that you were in a previous lifetime so you have that subconscious energy when you show up in a room because you just you just used to it so mine is cancer so I was a cancer in a past lifetime so I just that's just how I I act and it's actually your personality so and it's your appearance um, it also is some depending on what type of house system you use I use Placidus mostly it can be in the 12th house a little bit it can be mostly in the first house but the first house is the house of self so it's who you are so yes I have a Scorpio Sun but the energy that I give off when I walk in a room when I first meet people um, is cancer and also the planet that rules your rising sign rules your chart and that's actually a very important planet so mine is the moon. Um, your, I mean, your Capricorn mm -hmm. rising, so Saturn. So you give off that energy. Oh, yeah. I'm like highly emotional. Like I give off like mommy qualities, even though it's like at the end of the day, like no, I'm a Scorpio. But well, that's I give off that I wanna, quality. I want to talk like, about oh, that too. So nurturing, like yeah, well, get to know me, and I'm pretty bad though. See, that's <laughs> interesting as well, and yeah. I want to talk about that because. Um, even though the rising sign mm -hmm. is at the forefront, so of course, that's who you meet. That's mm -hmm. what you're doing. Yeah. Um, however, I think of the rising kind of as like the gate because I know that when that's stripped apart, or for better words, when you're at home, when you're comfortable with people you know, mm -hmm. I don't act like this mm -hmm. I am not in Capricorn business mode like I am in public and that's where I think me and a lot of people have disagreements because they're always like oh my gosh I'm so much Scorpio than you it's the rising it's everything mm -hmm. a Scorpio rising is the real Scorpio and I'm like well that's if you want to look at it that way because mm -hmm. you're outside in other people's faces most of the day so maybe it yeah. That's who it is, but let's say you're a double Pisces with a Scorpio rising like my sister is. Wow. When so you bring your ass home, yeah. she's the little bird, okay? Yeah. I mean, she, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's different. So I always think, like, if the rising, for whoever's saying that, if the rising's really who you are, that's who you are, like, mm -hmm. the, the root of, yeah. Your essence of who you are from the inside, but the rising, yeah. from what you're saying, now the astrologers, uh, that it's the outer appearance, what you're, what you're giving off. Yeah, but and when you don't realize it, it's not oh, like, no. wake up in the morning, I'm going to be a Cancer today. I'm no, like, honey, I would not choose. I would not wake up and be like, I'm going to be a Capricorn <laughs> yeah, today. No, would, we wouldn't having, having Saturnian energy on your ascendant, but it's similar to... So let me just speak to the people that are like, I'm a real Scorpio because I have a rising sign. Yeah. I personally know some people that literally have um, a Scorpio rising. I'll give one person an example. He's a double Gemini. Yeah. Gemini moon, Gemini sun. Has Scorpio rising, but then has Pluto retrograde um, in Scorpio right at the ascendant. So he's a happy, bub bubbly Gemini, generally. But the thing is, is having that on his ascendant has given him certain experiences with other people that have hardened who he is. And he has gone through traumatic transformations based on walking out in the world. So when you're walking with not only, you know, Plutonian energy in terms of sign, yeah. but then the actual planet itself, mm -hmm. you can be polarizing to people and you're, you know, happy about the Libra or Gemini or whatever. And you're just confused as to why. And especially if you're a child, you don't know. Mm -hmm. So... I don't, I'm not going to say that you all, you guys are real Scorpios. 
I'm going to say that you have an experience. that you're not a real Scorpio. <laughs> no, just... <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm saying that. <laughs> it's just the thing is, is that's just a, ooh, no, is that's, fine. Fine. Yeah, so that's just a hurdle that you have to deal with. And the thing is, is as you get older, it gets easier because you're becoming more and more like your son as you mature. So the why do you think people are, are confused though? Why do you think why they think why that do, they're real? Yeah. Why? Do, no. Well, not even in that yeah. aspect. But why do they think? And the rising is important. Obviously, it's important. I yeah. never say that it isn't. It's extremely, yeah. Capricorn yeah. Um, rising benefits me in many ways. Yeah. I mean, I'm a businesswoman, and I don't like. I you get have eighth house placements too, so your business. Eighth yeah. house is business. I get treat, and yeah. I and I walk Straight into up. a room that way, and I get tr- demand to get treated a mm-hmm. certain way, and I do have that. But when I get home, I don't care about that stuff. Yeah, and that's. I mean, even with my son in my tenth, I, I four Scorpio planets in my tenth house. Yeah, in the so then, house. then that's how also people tenth house is public, and how people see you as well. So you're, I mean, generally because also Capricorn and Scorpio energy work well together. Yeah. So your trio, we actually call them the big three. But your big three work very well together. Yeah. So it's not as much of an internal battle on right. being yourself right. on a day-to-day basis versus if you're a you know, Pluto, Scorpio, Ascendant, and the Gemini, it's just like right. you have a lot of battles to fight. So to me, you do have that Pluto energy. You do have that Scorpio energy because you have to battle yeah. something. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day... Sun sign is really like that's that's if you have Scorpio sun, it that's you're a real Scorpio. And I can tell the difference. <laughs> Sorry. Too. I can tell the difference. I did a video um where I showed examples of couples uh who one was Scorpio and the other was not only I actually gave them a bonus that she was the the couple one couple was not only a Scorpio rising but had sun in the eighth. And you could still mm-hmm. tell who the Scorpio was. Mm-hmm. You could. It was clear for me. It was clear dis- distinction yeah. of that. And I, one of the examples I used was Jaden Smith and Willow Smith because she's a Scorpio mm-hmm. and he's a Scorpio rising with Sun in the Eighth. And you mm-hmm. could still tell who's more comfortable in that Scorpio in that energy. position. And yeah. when I'm around Capricorns, they just chill. Yeah. And I'm the one like what? Yeah. <laughs> like it's Cap- so Cap and Scorp. <laughs> Cap and Scorp. I mean, Earth and Water. Um, the elements, like understanding how they work together also is very important. Earth and water, you can build with mud, water and, you know, earth make mud and then, um, air feeds fire. So that, that's just a easy way to remember it. But those, how those elements work together is very important. And when you have conflicting elements in your chart, then that can create more internal and external struggle for you. Um, going back to the eighth house too, because mm-hmm. I feel like I, there's a lot of people that be like, "Oh, I have a, the sun and the eighth, so I'm a, I'm a, you know, I have Scorpio energy." Yeah. The houses are, yes, there are planetary rulers in houses and um, signs that rules, you know, certain houses. But the houses are where the energy happens. It's not necessarily. It's not necessarily like a as big of a factor of how the energy is. So if you have an Aries sun in the eighth, so that just means that the transformation happens with you. Change, you're gonna go through a lot of death in your life. It could be real like people mm-hmm. dying, like right. your mother passing away, and that's yeah. how you regenerate and come back. Or it can be you just go through a lot of traumatic changes right. in the area of your life. And it could also signify the father or war Aries is you know war you could be in turmoil over and over again because of that and that's how you experience alchemy and change in your life Mm -hmm. um but that's not that does that just because you have an Aries sun in the eighth you're not a Scorpio I had an astrology Scorpio house yeah but we don't want to like confuse I think they do get confused with that I had an astrology professor who was Aries in the eighth house, but when he came in, honey, he was Aries. Yeah, he was just literally yeah. and came out, and everything was so fast yeah. and uh, yeah. up onto the next. And he he was so yeah. still Aries. However, uh, I could I could see a little bit of a little more depth to yeah. There'll be more yeah, depth because the energy like I could yeah. see a little a little more to yeah. that. But I I could cl- I clear I would never confuse him for yeah. Scorpio. Right. Well, it's like even. 
I'll use myself again as an example. My son is in Scorpio, but in the fifth house, so it's accidentally dignified. So that can happen as well if you have a planet that's in its natural house. So the fifth house is uh, Leo, um, and you know the sun rules the sign Leo, but that doesn't make me a Leo sun. It just gives that Scorpio energy a little bit. It, it just manifests itself in a different way. Right. So for me, it manifests in creative work that I do and the, just the things that I put out. And the, I may have like Scorpio kids, um, fifth house is children. So that's essentially where that manifestation happens. So I want to like yeah, clarify they're, that. They're, they're really and my teacher just drilled that in my head. She's like, don't combine the houses with right. the signs because right. it's messing up astrology. A lot of people um, do. They're like, I can do. tell you have a sun in the 10th house yeah. of Capricorn. You're so arrogant. You're yeah. so da 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 I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, whatever whatever you want to talk about. And then um, as far as like conjunctions, people are like, my son conjuncts Pluto. I'm so heavy. People are scared mm -hmm. of me. And uh, I was thinking, wow, mm -hmm. I've been on my channel for over six years. People did, never knew that I have a son that conjunct Uranus. Never mentioned it either. And I'm thinking like, if it's that potent, how come no one, only one person has ever said, ooh, I feel some From Uranus, Uranus energy. energy. Yeah, but it was like a fox. This astrology professor. Yeah, yeah. It was like I feel some energy. Well, I think it's that. like if you know, yes, the energies, then you can. And one thing actually I want to touch upon too is um, planets can be out of bounds. And Uranus, I actually have an out of bounds Uranus, but when they are um, at a declination that's higher or lower than the path of the sun, the ecliptic, basically it can like really. Get intensify the energy like your moon can be out of bounds and that just intensifies your emotions and yeah. you just feel completely differently than a lot of other people mercury can be out of bounds but it can also create someone who is just knowledgeable and genius in writing and and the written word um but they can go through traumatic experiences um that kind of leads to them being that way so that's another layer that we look at too um, but Uranus, maybe you might have one. But do you, do you think that bounds. their sun uh, conjunct Pluto makes them very Scorpio-ish like? I have sun conjunct Pluto, but I, I mean, do I come out? I, I mean, I think I do at this age. Like when I was younger, I was more of the Cancer and the the Leo that was more apparent. But now I like I think I guess yeah, and and I think other people that I've I've met that have sun conjunct Pluto. Do you mean in Scorpio or like in any sign? In any, Uranus? like mine conjuncts Uranus. Am I am yeah. I an Aquarius? No, you're not an Aquarius. <laughs> but it's that energy because I mean Uranus, you know, rules sign Aquarius. That energy is there, but you're not an Aquarius. But it's it's giving a quirkiness to your. You said it was conjunct Sun and Pluto. Yeah, it's giving a, a quirkiness to who you are. I see Uranus conjunct my MC as well. Okay. My son, my moon, and my So you're meant to, and that's how you come off to the world, and that's your path. You know, you're meant to not only be quirky and be different, but um, Uranus is a humanitarian sign. So somebody who, um, that's interesting, the internet as well. So somebody who is in front of others in the public, but online. Um, so yeah. that can also you know manifest in that way too. Right. But um, you, I wouldn't walk in a room and you would think I was an Aquarius. No. Okay. But I, I got, I get cat vibes. Capricorn. Yeah. yeah. Course, that's and my scorps, first. yeah. That's my first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's first. And your moon and your, you know, your sun are working really well together. So you have, you're, you're just emotions and who you are, you're very comfortable with it. And it's like, I know who I am and I'm not going to apologize for it or yeah. make any, you know, changes for anybody. Right. And I think that, I mean, that makes... Life easier. <laughs> it, does life. It, it definitely does. Easier, for yeah. Sure. Yeah. Where can people find you? Because you have an, a YouTube channel I and you're on Instagram, yeah. and you talk about you go in depth with a lot of different things. Like, um, do you do conjunctions? You break yes. that down for people. You talk about their Venus signs, yeah. their moons. Yeah. So where can they see your information? Yes. So um, my practice is called Lilith Astrology named after the divine goddess archetype Lilith, well, Black Moon Lilith, it's a point in space. Um, and essentially, it's a um, feminist archetype, and I have that in my first house, so that's why I named it, named that. 
after myself. Um, <clears throat> I don't think I, my name is Adama. I think I said that as well. Yes. Um, but you can find me at Lilith Astrology on Instagram and the same um, Lilith Astrology on YouTube. And I talk about everything. Like I try to break down the different layers, um, aspects, planet and sign. I'm doing um, a rising sign series right now, but I put out videos weekly to just educate and teach people astrology just so they can learn the basics. Right. And I also do private readings as well. That's right. So how would they get a private reading from you? So if you go to lilithastrology.com, and you can book. And That's right. And it's not free. Happen. So you it's have all the time free. to get your piggy <laughs> banks out or save up for your birthdays and things yeah. like that. Well, thank and, you for coming. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. I hope you guys enjoyed it.